Okay, hi, me again. Um, okay, so we're at tablet two. Tablet two of the Emerald Tablets of Toth the Atlantean. It's called the, the Halls of Amenti. Um, the Halls of Amenti by Toth the Atlantean. Deep in the earth's heart lie the Halls of Amenti. Far beneath the islands of sunken Atlantis, halls of the dead and halls of the living, bathed in the fire of the infinite all. Far in a past time, lost in the space time, the children of light looked down on the world. Seeing the children of men in their bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond, knew they that only by freedom from bondage could man ever rise from earth to the sun. Down they descended and created bodies, taking the semblance of men as their own. The masters of everything said after their forming, we are they who were formed from the space dust, partaking of life from the infinite all. Living in the world as children of men, like and yet unlike the children of men. Then for a dwelling place far neath the earth crust, blasted great spaces they by their power, spaces apart from the children of men. Surrounded them by forces and power, shielded from harm they, the halls of the dead. Side by side then placed they other spaces, filled them with life and with light from above. Built they then the halls of Amenti, that they might dwell eternally there, living with life to eternity's end. Thirty and two were there of the children, sons of lights, who had come among men, seeking to free from the bondage of darkness those who were bound by the force from beyond. Deep in the halls of life grew a flower, flaming, expanding, driving backward the night, placed in the center a ray of great potency, life-giving, light-giving filling with power all who came near it. Place they around it thrones, two and thirty, places for each of the children of light, placed so that they were bathed in the radiance, filled with the life from the eternal light. Time, there time after time, placed they their first created bodies, so that they might be filled with the spirit of life. One hundred years out of each thousand must the life-giving light flame forth on their bodies, quickening, awakening the spirit of life. There in the circle from eon to eon sit the great masters, living a life not known among men. There in the halls of life they lie sleeping. Free flows their soul through the bodies of men. Time after time, while their bodies lie sleeping, incarnate they in the bodies of men, teaching and guiding onward and upward out of the darkness into the light. There in the hall of life, filled with their wisdom, known not to the races of man, living forever neath the cold fire of life, sit the children of light. Times there are when they awaken, come from the depths to be lights among men, infinite they among finite men. He who by progress has grown from the darkness, lifted himself from the night into light. Free is he made of the halls of a menti, free of the flower of light and of life. Guided he then by wisdom and knowledge, passes from man to the master of life. There he may dwell as one with the masters, free from the bonds of the darkness of night. Seated within the flower of radiance, sit seven lords from the space-time above us, helping and guiding through infinite wisdom the pathway through time of the children of men. Mighty and strange, they, with their, they veiled with their power, silent, all-knowing, drawing the life force. Different yet one with the children of men, I different and yet one with the children of light. Custodians and watchers of the force of man's bondage, ready to loose when the light has been reached. First and most mighty sits the veiled 
presence. Lord of Lords, the infinite nine, over the other, from each, the Lords of the cycles. Three, four, five, and six, seven, eight. Each with his mission, each with his powers, guiding, directing the destiny of man. There sit they, mighty and potent, free of all time and space. Not of this world they, yet akin to it, elder brothers they of the children of men, judging and weighing they with their wisdom, watching the progress of light among men. There before them was I led by the dweller, watched him blend with one from above. Then from he came forth a voice, saying, Great art thou, Toth, among children of men, free henceforth of the halls of Amenti, master of life among children of men. Taste not of death, except as thou will it. Drink thou of life to eternity's end. Henceforth forever is life thine for the taking. Henceforth is death at the call of thy hand. Dwell here or leave here when thou desireth. Free is Amenti to the sun, S-U-N, of man. Take thou up life in what form thou desireth, child of the light that has grown among men. Choose thou thy work, for all souls must labor. Never be free from the pathway of light. One step thou hast gained on the long pathway upward. Infinite now is the mountain of light. Each step thou taketh but heightens the mountain. All of thy progress but lengthens the goal. Approach ye ever the infinite wisdom. Ever before thee recedes the goal. Free are ye made now of the halls of Amenti to walk hand in hand with the lords of the world. One and one purpose working together. Bringers of light to the children of men. Then from his throne came one of the masters, taking my hand and leading me onward through all the halls of the deep hidden land. Led me he through the halls of Amenti, showing the mysteries that are known not to man. Through the dark passage downward he led me into the hall where sits the dark death. Vast as space lay the great hall before me, walled by darkness, but yet filled with light. Before me arose a great throne of darkness, veiled on it seated a figure of night. Darker than darkness sat the great figure, dark with a darkness not of the night. Before it then paused the master, speaking the word that brings about life saying, O master of darkness, guide of the way from life unto life, before thee I bring a son of the morning, touch him not ever with the power of night. Call not his flame to the darkness of night. Know him and see him one of our brothers, lifted from darkness into the light. Release thou his flame from its bondage, free let it flame through the darkness of night. Raised then the hand of the figure, forth came a flame that grew clear and bright rolled back swiftly the curtain of darkness, unveiled the hall from the darkness of night. Then grew in the great space before me flame after flame from the veil of the night. Uncounted millions leapt they before me, some flaming forth as flowers of fire. Others there were that shed a dim radiance, flowing but faintly from out of the night. Some there were that faded swiftly, others that grew from a small spark of light, each surrounded by its dim veil of darkness, yet flaming with light that could never be quenched, coming and going like fireflies in the springtime, filled they the space with light and with life. Then spoke a voice mighty and solemn, saying, These are lights that are souls among men, growing and fading, existing forever, changing at living through death into life. When they have bloomed into flower, reached the zenith of their growth in their life, Swiftly then send I my veil of darkness, shrouding and changing to new forms of life. Steadily upward through the ages, growing, expanding into yet another flame. Lighting the darkness with yet greater power, quenched yet unquenched by the veil of the night. So grows the soul of man ever upward, quenched yet unquenched by the darkness of night. I, death, come, and yet I remain not. For life eternal exists in the all. 
only an obstacle I in the pathway, quick to be conquered by the infinite light. Awaken, O flame that burns ever inward, flame forth and conquer the veil of the night. Then in the midst of the flames and the darkness grew there one that drove forth the night, flaming, expanding ever brighter until at last was nothing but light. Then spoke my guide, the voice of the master, see your own soul as it grows in the light, free now forever from the Lord of the night. Forward he led me through many great spaces, filled with the mysteries of the children of light, mysteries that man may never yet know of until he too is a son, S-U-N again, of the light. Backward then he led me into the light of the hall of the light. Knelt I then before the great masters, lords of all from the cycles above. Spoke he then with words of great power saying, thou hast been made free of the halls of Amenti. Choose thou thy work among the children of men. Then spoke I, O great master, let me be a teacher of men, leading them onward and upward until they too are lights among men. Freed from the veil of the night that surrounds them, flaming with light that shall shine among men. Spoke to me then the voice. Go as ye will, so be it decreed. Master are ye of your destiny, free to take or reject at will. Take ye the power, take ye the wisdom. Shine as a light among the children of men. Upward then led me the dweller. Dwelt I again among children of men, teaching and showing some of my wisdom. Son of the light, a fire among men. Now again I tread the path downward, seeking the light in the darkness of night. Hold ye and keep ye, preserve my record. Guide shall it be to the children of men. Ooh, okay, so that's a lot, right? Um, but I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna break it down for both of us, for both of our sake. <laughs> so, okay, this one's tough. First of all, it's a really long uh, tablet. It's beautiful. Um, and then I, I wanna remind us about the last video, the first tablet, he talks about how uh, he, you know, was called by the dweller, you know, um, saw the guy face to face, which is rough because he was, you know, bright, super bright, shiny, not in his corporeal body. Um, and then he said, you know, he, as his reward, got the keys. You know, he's the holder of the keys now. So all of that stuff he was talking about in the first tablet, this is like him giving backstory on that. So this is like, you know, <laughs> the uh, episodic, you know, backstory montage, right? Okay, so first of all, Amenti is like super complicated. <laughs> um, but I want to, I want to go over just a couple things um, about just even the first line of this tablet. Um, Cause I've been working on it for over a decade. <laughs> it drives me insane, but I think I've got a better perspective now. Okay, so deep in the earth's heart lie the halls of Amenti. That's just the first stanza, the first phrase, not even stanza, the first, the first line. Deep in the earth's heart. Okay, let's talk about what the earth's heart could mean, okay? Um, so the earth, the first concept you have of that would be the planet, right? So you're gonna think giant sphere, mostly water, a little bit of land. Lots of animals and plants, right? That's what you're thinking, the earth. Okay, that's one concept. Uh, another meaning of the word earth could be just the earthly element. Um, the earthly element being material things, matter, form, form in general. Um, a negative magnetic energy um, mirroring the consciousness, right? So air uh, is the mirror opposite of earth and um, air is consciousness. So if earth is the mirror opposite of consciousness, it is the form relative to consciousness. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're looking at the heart of the earth. Well, the heart of the planet is a core, right? It's like a a bunch of fire down there, right? Supposedly, you know, gravitational force radiating heat, lava, heating up the gas, 
creating the rocks, blah, 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 right? That's, that is the, the core of the material earth. So the earthly element, what is the core the, the middle, the center, the beating heart of material in general, matter in general, form in general? Uh, I'm gonna go with consciousness, right? I mean, that's what creates form. <laughs> so, okay. So deep in the earth's heart, um, I'm gonna say, you know, this is beyond inception. This is a dream within a dream within a dream within a dream. Like you're, you're way outside the physical boundaries here. Um, and yet, it all comes back to quantum. Yeah, here we go again. I Look, I didn't put it there, it's quantum. Okay, deep in the earth's heart, in the quantum realm, um, which shit is super tiny, microscopic. Um, you have to also remember it would be a wave at that point, right? Um, light would act as a wave at that point. Light wouldn't act as a particle as it does here in the physical realm with us where we're interacting with it and observing it, right? Um, before light is observed, it's a wave. Once it's observed, it's a particle. So outside of our observational spectrum, it's a wave, okay? So deep in the Earth's heart um, is a super, super subconscious mental space uh, where shit is just waves. <laughs> We're gonna call that an ocean. That's an ocean. Um, <laughs> and that's the first four words, like, Welcome to five minutes about just the first four words. I love you talk. Okay, deep in the earth's heart, down in the quantum world, um, lie the halls of a mentee. Okay, again, we're gonna have to take like another five minutes. Okay, halls is a key word here. And a mentee is the other key word, all right? So um, when you have situations like this, when you come across um, like in ancient tablets or in hermetic, research or you know any of the stuff that's pre-1800 uh and you're like well, what does this mean because the language was different always go back to the etymology um find the etymology of the word so if you look up uh like the etymology of uh the word halls right uh instinctively you think it's celtic right like valhalla right halls halla uh and you're close you're very you know, i mean accurate right but um the way that we use it today is very much smaller than it was back then. Just like people today are very much smaller than they were back then. Um, halls back then were essentially consecrated areas, um, communal areas, either covered or walled in, but somehow secured somehow separated from the physical everything, right? This space is a safe space, right? That's the halls or um, it's like a, a place they would eat and have parties and, you know, um, long houses and stuff like that. Those were halls. Um, so in the quantum world of um, the sub sub subconscious of the physicality <laughs> realm, um, there are halls, which is to say separate spaces consecrated for a certain purpose. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Um, and then a mentee, um, you know, you're not really familiar with the, with the term a mentee unless you've read the tablets, but if you go into the etymology of a menti, it takes you to the etymology of amen, right? Amen, they take it back to Egypt, they take it back to, you know, the Hebrews, they take it back to as far as it can go, and in every language it's the same. It either means praise or give praise or truth or it is so, right? But we know it ends with an I, which makes it a plural. Especially if we're talking Hebrew, right? So, is it several truths or several praises or several, you know, what does this mean? 
Um, so a mentee is a name. It's a name for a group of things, I guess. It's a name for something plural. Um, and halls, um, also plural. The halls of a mentee, it's not just one place. Okay, well that means there's probably lots of ways to get there. And lots of ways to get out, I imagine. Okay, so deep in the earth's heart lie the halls of a mentee. So I'm picturing like super microscopic, like beyond cellular, beyond nuclear, beyond subatomic, teeny tiny. <clears throat> Are these sacred spaces consecrated for a purpose? Let's continue. Um, far neath the islands of sunken Atlantis. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go fourth dimension, right? Because Atlantis was at least fifth dimension, had to have been, right? Um, so then I'm going to say if it's above us, but beneath, beneath Atlantis, it's got to be fourth dimension, right? That's mental plane. All right, cool. Halls of the dead and halls of the living. Is that heaven and hell? Is that what he just said? <laughs> I mean, whatever. Um, mental plane, astral plane, vicinity. Um, you got halls for dead and halls for living. Okay, well, death belongs to the body, right? So if something is dead, um, we would call it alive. <laughs> uh, what they would call alive, uh, we would call dead. And what we would call alive, they would call dead. So I'm going to be like, it covers both either way, right? Halls of the dead and hall of living. But if we had to be in one of them, I feel like we'd be in the halls of the dead just because in their perspective, we'd be, we'd be the dead thing. Anyway, um, bathed in the fire of the infinite all. Yeah. Okay. So there's light there. Cool. Can't ever get away from light. Good to know there's light in the quantum realm, right? Far in a past time, lost in the space time. Um, past to us, but um, time isn't linear. So um, not exactly past to them, but just far out of reach. The children of light, children of light, is that like photons? Is that like stars? Children of light, interesting looked down on the world. Okay, the world. They didn't say the earth. Notice that it didn't say look down on the earth. It said look down on the world. Um, I imagine very much like we look into a video game. There are assassins creating it right now. On a rooftop, making a map, figuring out their next move, right? Seeing the children of men we're not even men. We're to the children of men. So again, with the reference to like how tiny we are again, um, in their bondage bound by the force that came from beyond, beyond men, a force beyond men, beyond men. Well, what's beyond us? 99% <laughs> of all visible light <laughs> of all light in general. Um, yeah, we can only see 1% of all there is to see. So there's a lot beyond us. Um, when we're talking about light anyway, uh, so some kind of force of light beyond us that we can't interact with cause it's so high vibrational frequency, maybe, um, seeing the children of men in their bondage. Okay. So the force is, is keeping us bound. Well, some kind of light force that's keeping us bound. Okay. Some kind of light force that's well beyond our comprehension that keeps us bound. Knew they that only by freedom from bondage could man ever rise from the earth to the sun. Okay, now we're talking about earth again. Notice how I didn't say world, it said earth. Okay, so could man ever rise? Okay, so it's possible, right? They know ascension is possible because they do it all the time. Or they did it once at least, right? And we know that descension is possible because they're talking about doing that now. Um, so they know they can traverse the different frequencies. 
and they also know that we can too. Um, and they're like impatient about showing us how. <laughs> um, down they descended and created bodies and created bodies. Um, that doesn't specify what type of body, okay? Anything, is, any form is a body. A raindrop is a body. Every type of formation is a body. So it doesn't, don't assume these are giants or these are Anunnaki or whatever. Don't assume that. Just assume it's a body. But they came down from a higher vibration, hence they had to descend. Taking the semblance of men as their own. Taking the semblance of men as their own could mean what you think it means, or it could mean that they infected us somehow. <laughs> I mean, say their body was a bacteria. And then, you know, airborne bacteria, uh, which helps them traverse the different, you know, le levels of <laughs> of matter in, in on the planet in general, right? And cut through, if they want to cut through, they would have to get more dense as they got closer to the, to the earth, right? So you'd have to start out very, very, <laughs> very, very thin and end up very, very fat. Okay, cool. Um, taking the semblance of men as their own. Um, I still think that's not copycat. Like maybe they, they infected us somehow. The masters of everything said after their forming, we are they who were formed from the space dust, partaking of life from the infinite all. Yeah, that still doesn't necessarily say to me they have like people bodies and they're walking around among us. That still says to me that they're like in our system now. <laughs> like we breathed them in somehow. They literally said space dust, but um, you know, we're all made of space dust. So living in the world as children of men, like and yet unlike the children of men. I mean, that still doesn't to me say they have to have their own person bodies. <laughs> they could live as us via, um, <laughs> via infection or possession, whatever you want to call it. Um, then for a dwelling place far neath the earth crust, the earth crust, not the earth's crust, not even a capital earth, just earth crust, far neath the earth crust. So still in the earth, still part of the earth, just very microscopic. Again, we go quantum. I'm so serious. For a dwelling place. Yeah, it still sounds like bacteria. Far neath the earth crust, blasted great spaces, they by their power. Blasted. That's the part that sounds scary. It's, I think it's meant to sound scary, but blasted. Um, great spaces. This is... Um, this is what he's talking about with the halls, right? That's what a hall is. It's a great space, consecrated for a certain reason. <clears throat> Spaces apart from the children of men. Well, they didn't have to aim at all to get that, because if it wasn't within that 1% <laughs> of all there is to see, we're not going to see it, uh, especially if it's super tiny. Um, surrounded them, the spaces, by forces and power. Shielded from harm they, the halls of the dead. So they made these spaces and then they put protection somehow around the spaces to protect us from the spaces. That's what it's saying. Somehow these spaces are, are harmful to us or the knowledge of these spaces would freak us out or whatever it is. It was to protect us, not to protect the spaces. Side by side, then place the other spaces, filled them with life and with light from above. That's where the multiverse came from. Yes, I get it now. <laughs> Built they then the halls of Amenti, that they might dwell eternally there, living with life to eternity's end. Um, which is something that you do anyway, because death belongs to the body. So this either means that they're out of body in this place, um, or they're both. They have bodies in this place and they have bodies outside of the place. Something to think about. 30 and 2 were there of the children. 
30 and 2. Um, I don't know if that's how they talk back then and it was just backwards or um, we just talk backwards now probably is what it is. But 30 and 2, um, I would instinctively think means 32. And then I would think if it's backwards, that means 23. So I would weigh both options. And this is how many of the children of light um, came to interact. Okay, well, Enoch says it was 200. There were 200 fallen angels, right? Um, Mount Hermon, right? So that doesn't work unless 30 and 2 is 23. What are there 23 of? There's 23, what, pairs of chromosomes. And then we come back to the chromosomes. It's always back to chromosomes. <laughs> like microscopic quantum, boom. Um, okay, so, um, and then, you know, there's teeth. So help me out. It's either teeth or <laughs> it's fucking chromosomes or it's bacteria. Um, it's one of those, but it's the, I feel like these are all in your body. None of these are actual people. This is actual on Mount Olympus, like hanging out, interacting with the affairs of men that way. You know, I think this is all in your body or in your mind or in your soul somehow. Um, seeking to free from the bondage of darkness, those who are bound by the force from beyond. Um, so the force that we can't see or interact with that, um, keeps us bound to our bodies, um, and from moving upward in soul force, like they want us to. So their goal is, um, you know, critical mass, right? Thank you. Um, Celestine prophecy. So they need a critical mass of human species to understand how to use their wings all at one time. <laughs> and until that critical mass learns how to use their wings, none of them will fly. And when none of them are flying, um, they still have lots of work to do. <laughs> so I imagine um, giving us, they're getting a little impatient. Um, okay, deep in the halls of life grew a flower. Okay, the halls of life being the spiritual realm, not physical, right? because we already decided the physical realms are the halls of death. Um, in the halls of life grew a flower. Okay, everything grows in a flower form, right? Even you in the womb, everything starts, you know, with the seed of life. So, you know, the seed of life pattern. So one circle becomes two, becomes three, becomes four, becomes five, becomes six, becomes seven. And then we can start doing shit, right? That is how you flower, okay? Everything grows like a flower, especially ideas, especially intentions. Um, so all of that, um, those probabilities waiting in superposition to fall into, collapse into a reality, that's what it would do. As it's waiting, it grows like a flower. Um, so deep in the halls of life grew an idea or an intention. Flaming, expanding, driving backward the night. Driving backward the night. The night being, you know, physicality, materiality, formation, right? It was stronger than form. Placed in the center, a ray of great potency. Um, in the center of the idea, the core, the heart, right? Now we're back to a heart again. Um, this ray of light, obviously, um, is I guess the spirit of the idea or the mitochondria of the idea, giving it energy constantly, whatever it is, it's, it's the, the thing you would have to kill in order for it to die. Um, life giving, light giving, filling with power, all who came near it, radiant energy, place they around it thrones, two and 30 thrones. Okay. Astronomically speaking, thrones are like moons. So like Jupiter has so many thrones about it, you know, earth has its only throne. And when earth sits on the throne, it's a new moon because you can't see the throne because earth is sitting on it. Right. So that's all astrological speaking. Right. Um, so it's like, so it's not teeth <laughs> it's, or it could be teeth. Um, so they placed around it essentially, you know, places for them to be <laughs> like, this is my spot. They all called shotgun in a certain area, right? Um, place they around it thrones two and 30 places for each of the children of light. 
placed so that they were bathed in the radiance, filled with a life from the eternal light. Okay, so there was this idea, there was this notion, there was this thought, and it grew. And as it grew, um, several 32 or 30 and 2 or however many that means um, of these muses or angels or whatever you want to call them, children of light, gather around it. Um, and they're both being fed by and feeding it energy. The idea. <laughs> Just the idea. Which is how magic works, actually. Um, there, time after time, place they their first created bodies. So that they might be filled with the spirit of life. First created bodies. Again, doesn't specify that it looked like ours. Um, but also first created. So from the time they had the idea <laughs> to come down and help us that first rough draft of a form that they were going to inhabit. And then as it drops down from the mental realm into the astral realm, into the physical realm, it solidifies and changes and gets more solid and crystallizes. Right? So this is that most very dense, very higher spirit form first created body. Um, so that might, they might be filled with the spirit of life. 100 years out of each thousand much must the life giving light flame forth on their bodies quickening awakening the spirit of life so okay back to how magic works um so the reason that we do like annual celebrations like solstice you know equinox those things are are twice a year right but then um as we dumb it down or as the religions stole um, the practices, it started to become um, like a once a year thing. So it was Christmas instead of solstice, right? Um, so it's once a year. And the reason that you annually celebrate something at the same time every year is so that you feed it energy as your planet passes by its orbit, right? You're constantly giving it energy when you're closest to that, you know, whatever realm that it's in. Um, so for them to do this for a hundred uh, of our years? Surely not of our years. A uh, hundred out of each thousand, maybe, or maybe we're down to just percentages of lifetime here, but I highly doubt it was based off of like an Earth orbit timeline. Um, but yeah, a hundred years out of each thousand, if they're hanging out around it and they're constantly giving it energy and receiving energy from it and they're in the higher realm and they're connected to their lower realm bodies in our realm, um, that's what you call consistency <laughs> right there. Boom, constant energy, always recharging. There in the circle from eon to eon sit the great masters living a life not known among men. There in the halls of life they lie sleeping. Free flows their soul through the bodies of men. Okay, so in the halls of life, the spirit realm, their bodies lie sleeping. But their soul flows free through the bodies of men. I'm still like, that's, we're talking about chromosomes here, <laughs> or DNA. It's got to be the algorithms, the coding of our bodies. It's got to be, because um, it just makes sense. Time after time, or their bodies lie sleeping, incarnate they in the bodies of men. Okay, that doesn't mean they have to have their own, like, man, people bodies. There are already people, and they already know how to go in and out of bodies. There's no need for them to have their own. <laughs> they can just use ours. Um, not saying that that's what it means, but that's how I, I would look at it, honestly. Teaching and guiding onward and upward out of the darkness into the light. Well, we're talking about children of light, children of light, like muses, like angels, like inspiration, ideas, thoughts, um, concepts, love, empathy, trust, whatever. Children of light, not actual people. They're in the hall of life, filled with their wisdom, known not to the races of man. This this is the first time it says man. It doesn't say men. It says man. And it says races. Like, not species. Races of men. Of man. So that despite your DNA, you still don't know this is happening around you. <laughs> you still can't. You're still not accessing the hall of life. 
filled with their wisdom. Um, despite your DNA, living forever neath the cold fire of life, said the children of light. Okay, the only time I can think of that fire is cold is in a dream state because your sensory perception isn't functional and you can hold fire in your hand. Um, so again, out of body. No, not to the races of man, living forever, need the cold fire of life. So out of body, but hanging out in, in the astral plane, um, still connected. <sighs> Times there are when they awaken, come from the depths to be lights among men. Infinite they among finite men. Okay, so whatever they are isn't attached to death. And when they become active, uh, they inspire men. So I still feel like that's DNA. He who by progress has grown from the darkness lifted himself from the night into light. That's our raising of our consciousness. Free is he made of the halls of Amenti, free of the flower of light and of life. So free is he made of both halls, the death and the life halls. You're, you just don't have to anymore. Samsara, you've done, you're graduated, good job. Um, <laughs> by progress, grown from the darkness. Um, outgrown your body, outgrown the need for a body, outgrown the want for a body, individuation in general. Guided he then by wisdom and knowledge, passes from men to the master of life. So the next step after man is wisdom and knowledge. And you, once you pass what you're supposed to learn as man, um, then you're guided by wisdom and knowledge. You're not guided by instinct and you're not guided by primal urges of survival and mating and all of that. Once you surpass all of that, um, you don't have to be stuck to the body. There he may dwell as one with the masters, free from the bonds of the darkness of night. Um, yeah, now you're a freaking space star and you don't have to be a, in a body anymore. Uh, seated within the flower of radiance sit seven lords from the space times above us. Helping and guiding through infinite wisdom, the pathway through time of the children of men. The seven lords, I'm going to go with chakras. I know we have more than seven chakras. We have seven main chakras and they're your connection, your portal to other dimensions. Um, I'm going to be like the seven lords of the chakras. Mighty and strange, they veiled with their power, silent, all knowing, drawing the life force. Yep, definitely chakras. Different yet one with the children of men. I different yet one with the children of light because the children of light also have their own chakras. Good to know. Custodians and watchers of the force of man's bondage, ready to loose when the light has been reached. That's uh, activation. First and most mighty sits the veiled presence. Lord of Lords, the infinite nine. Okay, the veiled presence, uh, the one you can't see <laughs> or interact with or control really, that would be your Sazrara, your crown chakra. Over the others, from each, the lords of the cycles, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight. Each with his mission, each with his powers, guiding, directing the destiny of man. Okay, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine. Those are the chakras. Three is your root chakra, your muladhara. Why do we start at three? It's a super good question. You wanna hear my theory? Here's my theory. We start at three because one and two are included in three because one is the first dimension, which is like mineral kingdom, second dimension, two, vegetable kingdom, and then we are three, um, animal kingdom, right? So we would start at three because we're the third kingdom, right? We have had, already had one and two in our, uh, you know, previous uh, pre-evolutionary bodies, like, um, you know, like dinosaurs, <laughs> um, then, you know, mammals got, you know, didn't need the first ones or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're in your tail. First, maybe one and two chakras are in your tail and we just don't have that anymore. Uh, I don't know, but 
Three is your Muladhara. Four is your Swadhisthana. Five is your Manipura. Six is your Anahata. Seven is your Vishuddha. Eight is your Ajna. And nine is your Sasrava. This, this much I know. Three, four, five, and six. And, I want, and it always says five and six. It never says five, six. And there's commas between everything, except for where it says ain't. So I want to be like five and six um, have to mirror each other. You be used as one. So you could you activate three at birth, right? Survival instinct kicks in. You activate four in puberty, right? Hormones kick in. You activate five all throughout, right? That's your will when you're trying to figure out what you want. Usually around two, you get that down pretty good. Um, so those of all activate effortlessly without you. Anyone who makes it to six has to put effort in, right? If you can live in your heart chakra, you've definitely put effort in. Um, if everyone can, can do the first three instinctively, uh, the fourth is kind of like a special, special trip, right? To live in your heart chakra, you have to have mastered empathy which a lot of us don't, <laughs> but when you get there, you know it, right? Seven uh, is when you master truth, and uh, eight is when you master <laughs> circadian rhythms, I guess. Uh, your conscious and subconscious start to work together. You can use them actively together, like, um, like uh, lucid dreaming, but all the time, <laughs> just all the time. Your whole life is lucid dream. Uh, and then nine is uh, where he, what he's talking about now. Guiding and directing the destiny of man. There they sit, mighty and potent, free of all time and space. Not of this world they, yet akin to it, elder brothers they of the children of men. Judging and weighing they with their wisdom, watching the progress of light among men. Like they, your chakras connect you to the higher realms. You know this, we've all known this your higher your chakras connect you to your higher spirit in the higher realms so the messages the communication that your higher spirit's always trying to give you with omens and signs and random things this is the pathway it takes to get there and this is how you communicate back chakras um <clears throat> before them was i led by the dweller the dweller being his higher spirit watched him blend with one from above. One is capitalized, O-N-E, all capitalized. So um, is he talking about um, one out of like the chakras that, you know, where they're missing one and two and it starts at three? Is he talking about one? I have no idea. But um, what I always imagine when I read this part, watched him blend, I always imagine it's like two people walking toward each other and then they just become one person and that person starts talking to you. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, and the, but okay, but once they're blended, um, then it starts speaking to him. So like the two halves had to become whole and then it like, then he could, I don't know, just in my head, but he, he has to blend and then he can talk. So I don't know if that means he has to like add some tech or lower his vibration or, or, you know, look up the language. I don't know, but he had to, he had to do something first and then he could communicate with Toth in, in words. And then he's like, dude, you rock. Great art thou Toth among children of men. Like you did it. Good job, you did it, you know? Free henceforth of the halls of Menti. You've eaten samsara, you don't have to go back to a body anymore. Good for you. Uh, master of life among children of men. You know, like you, you conquered the game. You won, good job. Um, taste not death, except as thou will it, uh, because you no longer have to put yourself into things that die. <laughs> you know, you can be a spirit forever now. Um, drink thou of life to eternity's end. Henceforth is forever life, henceforth forever is life thine for the taking. Henceforth is death at the call of thy hand. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if you don't have to go into a body, you don't have to die. You have to, but you know. But then also he's referring to like, when you have that point, when you get to that point where you beat some sorrow or whatever, if you choose to come back in, you get to retain your memories, right? Or you know how, you know how at that point to retain the memories of every lifetime, right? So that's the veil in reincarnation. That's the veil that you have that you go through that every time you hit it, your memory is wiped. And you just, because memory that you have access to 
is limited to like your body, right? So, you know, your software only reads the hardware and between every body you store that knowledge elsewhere or, or it's, you know, still in the, in the Akashic record and you can access it. Um, but you have to know how, and you have to practice doing so, and you have to close off all of the other sensory perception noise around you to do so. Um, dwell here or leave here when thou desireth frees a menti to the son of man s-u-n son of man this is the second time he says man so he's like you beat life you know you don't have to do the body anymore no more reincarnation for you good job you freaking rock you're awesome you know enough now you don't have the carnal desires anymore you don't have the survival instinct anymore you're good um you can hang out in the spiritual realm as long as you like, you don't, you know, um, or, you know, not now you can traverse, right? You can go through all the dimensions. You, you made them all, all the way through. Um, and free as a mentee to the son of man, like, because you're not in a body, you can go wherever you want <laughs> because you beat the system. Now you can go do lots of things. You have lots of options now. Uh, take up life in what form thou desireth. Um, because they're not stuck in a body there, so they can literally be whatever shape they want to be. Child of the light that has grown among men. Choose thou thy work, for all souls must labor. Never be free from the pathway of light. Um, yeah, there's always more work to do. But, um, like, we're all doing a thing here, so you're not doing that thing anymore, but now you have to do this thing, or you could go back to doing that thing. There's only two things to do, right? You can either be man or you can help man. And these are your options. Um, so he's like, what do you want to do? You know, there's lots of placements we can put you in and, you know, send you over to the, you know, <laughs> HR and HR will help you out. Um, never be free from the pathway of light. One step thou has gained on the long pathway upward. Infinite now is the mountain of light. Each step thou taketh, but heightens the mountain. All of thy progress, but lengthens the goal. Thank you, entropy. Approach ye ever the infinite wisdom, ever before thee recedes the goal. Yeah, the more you know, the more you know, there's more to know. Free are you made now of the halls of MNT to walk hand in hand with the lords of the world. One-on-one -on -one purpose, working together, bringers of light to the children of men. I mean, yeah, this is what we do here. <laughs> so welcome to uh, the afterlife. It's uh, just helping, <laughs> helping the, the living. And then from his throne came one of the masters. Okay, one of the masters from his moon orbiting the flower of fire, I remember. And he walks him through the astral plane and he's like, look at this over here and look at this shit over here and bet you never knew this existed and hey, check this out, you know? And Toth is like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> through the dark passage downward he led me. So I guess somewhere on the end of the old, uh, astral plane, he finally gets to where he's going so that uh, he can introduce Toth to death, just death in general. Um, vast as space, lay the great hall before me, walled by darkness, but yet filled with light. Okay. So he meets death in a hall, right? A sacred space consecrated for a certain purpose. Um, dark, but yet filled with light. So I always picture like space with like, you know, stars everywhere. Before me arose a great throne of darkness. Okay. So throne of darkness veiled on it seated a figure of night okay um darkness and night are two different things right so the throne of darkness um that could be just like what we would imagine like a new moon right um veiled on it like couldn't really make out uh or interpret seated a figure of night okay a figure of night could be just having the shape of something you would recognize in the physical plane or whatever you imagine some kind of Dracula shit going on whatever but to me figure um, tells me form 
um, almost like action figure, right? And then Knight tells me something, <laughs> something covered in something else, you know, or something of Knight would be something of the earthly realm or, you know, Maya, essentially. Darker than darkness sat the great figure, dark with the darkness not of the night. Ah, okay, so not like physicality, um, but still something he can't really interpret because it's dark to him, dark matter. <sighs> Different, so not from the physical plane, but resembling something that he would recognize from the physical plane. And before it then pause the master, speaking the word that brings about life. So his guide, whichever chakra is leading him here, stops at this certain point and does like a ritual, like password situation. And I don't know if that's to awaken the thing or to draw its attention. Um, you know, they used to say that when you name a thing, you cause it to come into being, right? That's essentially like saying, hey, Google, you know, same thing. So he had to, hey, Google it. And then it started paying attention to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, master of darkness, guide the way from life unto life. Oh, algorithm. It's an algorithm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a samsara algorithm for reincarnation. Before thee, I bring a sun, S-U-N again of the morning. Touch him not ever with the power of night. Call not his flame to the darkness of night. Okay, the darkness of night is forgetting in between lifetimes, like we talked about, just the forgetting. The veil, like the memory loss. So he's like, okay, see this guy? Um, he's gonna be passing through bodies in and out all the time now. Um, leave him be though with the whole veil thing like don't throw the the veil of forgetfulness over him because he needs to remember shit because he's working with us now so this is he's essentially going to get his credentials from death himself like you know here's your gun and here's your badge and um we won't shoot you when we see you <laughs> you know uh know him and see him one of our brothers lifted from darkness into the light now he works with us release thou his flame from its bondage free let it flame through the darkness of night through the darkness of night Release thou his flame from its bondage. Free let it flame through the darkness of night. So yeah, as he takes on whatever form he wants to take on, just leave him be. Let him and keep him and let him keep his memory. The darkness of night, nope. He needs to remember shit. Raise then the hand of the figure. And he's just like, he says nothing. He's just like, oh, how? Forth came a flame that grew clear and bright. And he's like, yes, you know fine and the like the figure the algorithm or the tech or whatever this thing is this dark darker than darkness but not of the night thing i'm like i'm gonna be like it's ai this freaking ai thing doesn't speak it just waves its hand and um all of a sudden it's done right so he's his he's going through and this is like raise in the hand of the figure forth came a flame that grew clear and bright rolled back swiftly the curtain of darkness unveiled the hall from the darkness of night. Oh, so the thing came from the earthly realm. That's cool. Then grew in the great space before me, flame after flame from the veil of the night. Uncounted millions leapt they before me, some flaming forth as flowers of fire, others there were that shed a dim radiance, flowing but faintly from out of the night. Some there were that faded swiftly, others that grew from a small spark of light. And I always picture like he's like in space and like all the stars are just kind of like coming up to say hi to him like little bugs you know like bees do like just kind of hanging out around him and then they go on about their business um like fireflies in springtime is what he says which is beautiful then spoke a voice mighty and solemn saying i think this is the ai talking now these are lights that are souls among men growing and fading, existing forever, changing yet living through death into life. When they have bloomed into flower, reach the zenith of growth in their life. Swiftly then I send my veil of darkness, shrouding and changing to new forms of life. Okay, good to know. Shrouding 
and changing. These are two different concepts, but working together in order to complete the whole reincarnation picture. So steadily upward through the ages, growing, expanding into yet another flame. There's your next body. Good luck with that. Lighting the darkness with yet greater power. So um, the more we go up in consciousness uh, as we evolve from amoebas to where we are now, um, the light gets a little bit brighter. So grows the soul of man ever upward, quenched yet unquenched by the darkness of night. Quenched yet unquenched by the darkness of night. So even though you forget, you still, your progress still counts. <laughs> I, death, come and yet I remain not. For life eternal exists in the all. Yeah, death is a thing that only belongs to the body. Only an obstacle, I in the pathway, quick to be conquered by the infinite light, which is you. <laughs> Awaken, O flame that burns ever inward. Flame forth and conquer the veil of the night. I feel like that's him talking to us, like directly to us. Like, not in the story, still telling us the story. Like this is him, like side note, by the way. You got this, you could do this too. Then in the midst of the flames and the darkness grew their one. Yes, yes, yours is the brightest. Thank you, Toth. Uh, see your own soul as it grows in the light, free now forever from the Lord of the night. And then he's like, forward he led me through many great spaces, filled with the mysteries of the children of light. Okay, he's in the astral plane. He's in the thought realm, right? He's looking at the Akashic record, and he's like, look at this. This is really cool. Um, and then, you know, he says, we could do it too, not in our bodies. And then he says, backward, then he led me. Backward. Like, back from the way he came, like back the way he came. Into the light of the hall of the light. Knelt I then before the great masters, lords of all from the cycles above. Okay, that's, I mean, you know, he was grateful. <laughs> Spoke he then with words of great power. Thou hast been made of the free, thou hast been made free of the halls of Amenti, choose thou thy work among the children of men. And he's like, dude, I want to be a teacher. Can I be a teacher? And he's like, so be it. You are master of your own destiny, free to take or reject at will. Aw, look, free will. Take you the power, take you the wisdom, shine as a light among the children of men. Take you the power, take you the wisdom. Boom. Never, <laughs> never have to forget again. Upward then, led me the dweller. Upward. Dwelt I again among the children of men, teaching and showing some, some of my wisdom, son of the light, a fire among men. Now again, I tread the path downward, seeking the light in the darkness of night. But hold ye and keep ye, preserve my record. Guide shall it be to the children of men. Okay, tread the path downward. Downward into the quantum realm saying I think um, I think the quantum realm and then the astral plane are like in the same vicinity like the same like once you get so small you you're automatically astral <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, but yeah so that was like the longest tablet it was rough but I think it's it's a great backstory and he's like so dreamy about it and he's trying to tell you like okay here's what i mean when i say halls of a mentee right so there are entities there um working for us with us through us every day and we have no idea because they purposely veiled it from us purposely veiled it from us because we were freaking monkeys obviously <laughs> like <laughs> obviously it would have made no sense to give that information to monkeys. Um, but, but we're at the point now where we need this information and we need to utilize it on a daily basis to explore inside. Um, because your answers aren't anywhere else. Know thyself. 